Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, it's actually daytime again. I'm starting to develop a bit of a trend of actually trying to do work during the day. Today we've got a machine that's come in and it um, randomly freezes. So, guess we'll have a look, see what we've got. It's a fairly old machine. It's an old Vista box. Now, random freezes. I would say could either be uh, um, power supply issues such as bad caps or we could have a failing hard drive so there's a bit of dust in there but it's overall fairly clean the main board itself is actually quite clean so I'll grab myself a keyboard and I should probably get my boot stick which is on the other side of the room Alright, I've got all the equipment I need, I think. Boot sticks going in. Keyboard mouse going in. Screen is on. What do we want? What a VGA connector. I'd love to get one of those little 10 inch screens or something like that. Something I can just put on the wall. Just sort of save me having the bulk of this Dell screen here all the time. Alright, I think we're good there. We need to get alcohol out of the way. Powering up. So, temperature seems perfectly normal in spite of the dust. It's sitting at 38 degrees. It's run DD Rescue. Uh, we're just going to let the DD Rescue do its thing. That's probably going to take, uh, let me see, we're almost 10 gigs right now, a minute in. So it's going to be at least half an hour, perhaps three quarters of an hour, assuming it doesn't actually uh, terminate early due to a fault. If that comes back clean, then I'm going to have to look inside that power supply. And if that's clean, then we have some sort of Windows issue, though I'd be a little bit shocked if that was the case. A machine this age, I would be anticipating some sort of hardware fault. But I've been wrong a bit lately the last couple of days, so I could be wrong again this time. I guess we'll wait and see. Alright, we've gotten past the full hard drive scan, and there's been no issues. So it's time now, we're going to have to look at the power supply. I can't think of too many other things immediately off the top of my head that could cause this issue, typically. Not to say that it isn't something interesting and different, but for now, we're just going to check the power supply. I could just plug in a totally separate one, see what's going on. But, like I said, with the age of the machine, it's uh, just a normal sort of thing you should check. And if after this we still can't see anything wrong, then I'm going to actually have to boot up the machine and see if I can replicate this glitch. In. Oh, nice one. So on very first inspection, it, yeah, I'm going to have to clip those, this cable tie off as well. I gotta admit, I'm not seeing any. Uh, I'm not seeing any caps having popped here. The main ones are sitting flat to the board. 
What is interesting is this power supply is actually very limited in the number of capacitors it has. So it must be a fairly low wattage, is it? Well, it's claiming to be a 300 watt. I'm sort of normally used to seeing quite a few more in there. Yeah, I'm really not. I mean, other than the fact that it is dirty, but that's to be expected for anything this age. Why couldn't you be a plain obvious fault? Um, well, I'm going to have a look at the main board again a bit closer. Well, can't see anything on that main board that's obvious. So we'll put the power supply back together. And looks like we're going to have to boot in. I did remember that I've actually not done the memory check. So I should really do that next. Well, at least this one didn't have any insects in it or geckos. Geckos are a real favourite around here. Particularly when it comes winter. Let's head straight for the nearest computer power supply. Nest in there. And sooner or later you start to smell a real bad smell in the in the area. Because you don't actually hear the geckos pop or anything like that typically. What'll happen is they'll just God damn it, I've jammed a cable in there. Um, what will happen is the geckos will get the shock, they'll die, but uh, they won't go in any sort of explosive way or anything interesting like that. And it's not until they start to decompose that you detect that there's something not quite right. <laughs> and by goodness, when they decompose, yeah, it's just something about, something about reptiles, snakes, frogs, yeah, the, that sort of class of animal. When their flesh decomposes, it gets that real sharp, nasty smell. More so than mammals. Uh, come on. Now I will put a couple of cable tires back into this computer, but I'm not going to be as aggressive as what they, uh, the existing situation was. In this case, have you got a buckle or is it? No, that was just the connector. This sort of situation does bring up an interesting question as to what do you do first? Do you just go straight in? and try your luck visually inspecting and doing hardware tests and things like that and hope that you just come across the problem or do you go through the rigors of booting it all up logging in running tests hoping you pick it up that way so yeah it's uh, i tend to swing between the two of them And the other thing, of course, is you never really can be sure that the customer has told you exactly what really is happening. I mean, I've had people tell me that the system is completely dead, absolutely nothing coming up, and then you find out it just isn't booting all the way into Windows and it's just giving you a black screen of death or something like that. So, yeah, it's just because people don't really have a, uh, what could you say, They can't explain things that they're not really fully, uh, I wouldn't say aware of, but what they can't fully explain. So they just come up with their nearest possible explanation, which is it's dead. And so a lot of the time it isn't so much because the person's stupid, it's just lack of terminology, which I can ex understand. But I gotta admit, it does seem like every time you do try to 
to perhaps take the word of the customer, it ends up just being a waste of your time. I've had customers leave me with several page reports on what's going on and it ends up simply being a waste of your time. Uh, you find the wrong sort of details are expanded too much and the things that you really need to know aren't detailed at all. So again, you, you can't expect a perfect report like that because it's not their daily job, that's what you're doing. And why is this power LED light taken out? Get this back in. Um. Alright, let's do... We're going to do a mem check. I should have done that initially. Well, it would help if someone plugs in the power... Uh, the screen cable. I do not believe that is what I requested. Marvellous. I have to wait for it to boot. Alright, let's bring up memory test. Four gigs. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to sit around and wait for this. And if this also passes, then I really am sort of left in the corner where I have to accept that maybe it is just a software issue. And I'm going to have to go in there and dig around. In the short amount of time that it was booted before I could see there are already quite a few programs that uh, don't really need to be in there. Things like my beloved McAfee uh, internet security scanner, things like that. So yeah, if this fails we'll just go in there and start cleaning up the software. Maybe we'll be lucky and actually have the particular fault that this is brought in for demonstrate itself in which case we've got ourselves a bit of a lead to go on. So I'm going to let this memory test run, and we'll see how we go after that. Alright, I uh, did the memory test, everything came back good and clear. So I've been in discussion with the customer on this one, and what we've decided is, given that the drive, being a 320 gig, is quite old, we've decided that we're going to go bump it up to a 1 terabyte, and I'm going to fix up just the fans and whatnot. I think one of these two is grinding and I'm not sure which one it is. So I'll sort that out. Other than that, everything else seems to be behaving just fine. This is one of those difficult situations where there's definitely a fault. Um, I mean, the customers generally don't make up this sort of stuff when it's freezing and whatnot. But it just isn't showing up in any clear, defined way, which makes it very problematic to pin it down. So Replacing the hard drive is, in this case, a good precaution. A person wouldn't like to lose their data. So bumping up to 1 to terabyte should do a nice job. It'll also still work with Vista without causing any grief, as well as this uh, motherboard BIOS. Now, where some of the possible issue is here uh, that I haven't been able to detect is the customer was saying that it mostly froze when they were trying to save files which means potentially the disk drive has a fault when it's writing. Now it's very hard to test this without damaging the user's data and no one's going to really write a program that they're going to guarantee the safety of the data to be able to test writing because like if you say take something like DD Rescue, it can test just on the read side uh, well, of a particular client drive, but in order to do a write test, it would have to first read the block, and then rewrite the block, but if you corrupt the data when rewriting it, then you know, you've ruined your data, of course. So that's why generally you don't see write tests available um, as a general rule for systems that have 
valid data on them. It's easy enough to do if it's a drive that you're just testing and it's got nothing important on it. But no one's going to really guarantee that doing a right test won't damage existing data that's valuable to you. So in that case, I guess what you could do is clone this drive to an image and then perform a right test on it. And if everything's good, put the clone back on. But really, overall, at the end of the day, the amount of time that consumes, you may as well just uh, move to a new drive and go with that. All right, I'm going to do the drive transfer, and hopefully this will work a bit better. I will probably give a summary after I've done that and let you know how it goes. All right, we're back onto the computer that I've been working on today. Uh, from the previous bit of footage, I've transferred the whole system over to a one terabyte Western Digital Blue, and now we're just uh, doing the cleanup. Initially, when it was first booting, it was very badly uh, stalling and generally misbehaving. It's something in the MS config startup. I removed basically everything and now it's working quite nicely. So we're at a point where the process is going through the beloved list of programs that have been installed and just wiping out everything that shouldn't be there or anything that looks a bit uh, questionable. Oh, look, here we got Windows Media Encoder 9 series. Is that legit? Uh, I think I might uh, bring in the... Oh boy, brain's starting to go fading on me here today. Bring in uh, malware bytes and that'll help clear out a lot of things. Okay, McAfee Security Scan Plus can take a hike, as we always make do. When I was checking the hard drive, the 320 gig that was on this before, initially on the first test it didn't show any errors, but when I had a look at it closer, when I did another test, I could see in the first five gigs or so, there's a lot of stalling going on. It drops down to about, um, uh, about five to ten megabyte a second transfer, so it's not at the point where it's producing errors right now, but it's certainly getting pretty close to it. So moving over to a one terabyte drive resolves that issue, and now we've just got to clean up the rest of it. 